Hey guys, Frank Schaller here. Welcome back to Nurse 220. This week we're doing the neurological system and I could not find one volunteer this week for the demonstration video, but I found two. So I have both of my sons here. I have Elijah, he's six, and I have Ezekiel, he's four. So starting off with the neurological system, the first thing you're gonna wanna know on your exam is when the patient is from a lying position to a sitting position, you wanna know how they did with that position change. And typically the patient is going to do well, they're gonna sit up with no issues. And moving on down to superficial touch, you'll want to do this to a few different areas. You wanna make sure to hit the face, the arms, the hands, the legs, and the feet. So I'm gonna do this first on Elijah here. So Eli, do me a favor, close your eyes, and tell me, where do you feel the cotton touching you? Close your eyes. Where do you feel the cotton touching you? On my cheek. On your cheek, okay, keep your eyes closed. Where do you feel the cotton touching you? On my hand. On your hand, okay, keep your eyes closed. Where do you feel the cotton touching you? Your arm, okay. Eyes closed, eyes closed. Where do you feel the cotton touching you? My knee. Your knee or your leg, okay. Then keep your eyes closed. Where do you feel the cotton touching you? My toe. Very good. So you'll wanna make sure to do that bilaterally in all of those areas, typically using a cotton ball. But just for fun, I use a little plush teddy bear. Moving on down, next we're gonna to wanna to assess cerebellar function. And we'll start off testing cerebellar function by having the patient demonstrate RAM or rapid alternating movements. And what you have the patient do is simply keep both hands in supination and you'll have them quickly go back and forth between supination and pronation. Typically, I will demonstrate to the patient what this looks like. So Ezekiel, can you put your hands like this on your legs? What I want you to do is go back and forth fast as you can, faster, fast, 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 fast. Great job, all right. He did great with his rapid alternating movements of the upper extremities. And then testing the lower extremities, we will want to test that the patient can do heel to shin on both sides. So, Eli, what I want you to do, put one leg out, put one leg on your heel, and slide it up and down, up and down. It's called heel to shin. Can you do the other side? Fantastic. Great job, Eli. You did great. Next, for testing some of the deep tendon reflexes. For this class, we're just gonna keep it simple. We're gonna do the most fun reflex, which is the patellar reflex, also known as the knee reflex. You could use a reflex hammer, or what I like to do in clinical practice is use the side of my stethoscope. And what I will do is I will find where the patellar tendon is, which is just below the kneecap or the patella. And I'm gonna have the patient resting their legs and I'm simply gonna tap on both sides. And I saw a good patellar reflex here. Make sure to get the left. Great, and his patellar tendon reflexes were equal bilaterally. Next, we want to do the FAST exam. The FAST exam is a great and quick way to assess your patient for any signs of a stroke. Uh, it doesn't include every possible abnormality of a stroke, but it's a really good starting place. So. FAST stands for face, arms, speech, and time. And when I say time, I mean, when is the last seen normal of the patient, if you're able to get that information? That helps us figure out what kind of intervention can be done to the stroke patient, whether that is TPA or some type of clot retrieval in the brain. So starting off with a FAST exam, you wanna assess the face for symmetry. So I'm looking at Elijah's face here, and I notice that it is symmetrical bilaterally. I don't notice any droopy eyelids. I don't notice any droopy mouth. Overall, his face looks completely symmetric. Then I wanna test the arms. Simple way to test the arms is just checking their grip strength bilaterally. So Eli, do me a favor with both your hands, squeeze my fingers, both hands, squeeze them tight. Show me how strong you are. Wow. His grip strength is strong and it's equal bilaterally. Next, I'm going to do testing his speech. And all you have to do is ask your patient to repeat a simple sentence. And when they repeat that sentence, you wanna assess for any type of slurred speech or any trouble finding words, those types of abnormalities. 
So, Elijah, I want you to say this sentence after me, okay? It was warm in Michigan today. It was warm in Michigan today. Great. He did great. I didn't notice any slurred speech whatsoever, and he was quick to respond to my question. And then finally, time again, you want to note the last scene normal. So in this circumstance, I'm not noticing any abnormalities. And then we're going to move on down to the plantar reflex. And all you're going to do with this reflex is typically with um, the patient not having shoes on, it's okay if they have socks on or if they're barefoot. What you want to do is stroke the bottom of the foot from the heel up to the pinky toe side, back over to the big toe. So it looks like an upside down J. And typically I would do this with perhaps a reflex hammer, or again, it would be okay to use a stethoscope. Of course, use an alcohol swab afterwards so that you don't have a stinky stethoscope for your next patient. So all I'm gonna do, and you wanna make sure you test this bilaterally, is again, starting at the heel of the foot, stroke the foot and then upside down J and a normal reflex in an adult patient would be no fanning of the toes. Okay. No Babinski reflex. If you did notice that reflex in an adult patient, it could be a sign of a neurological abnormality. Make sure you test that bilaterally. That's it this week, guys, for the neurological system for Nurse 220. Hope you guys learned something. Take care. Bye-bye.